Hey Haven. Okay, are you ready? Go get it. Look how faces. Come. Come. Good girl, Haven. Good girl. Lay down. Good girl. Hey. It's on at the park. And I want to make a video about the mind. The mind is like a dog. It's no mistake that we named dogs, dogs, which is God spelled backwards. Because just like God, just like the mind, dogs are joyous and loving and wild and free and full of energy and hilarious and unpredictable. And they can chew the shit out of your furniture and shit and piss all over your couch and, you know, bite you and send you to the hospital if your dog isn't obedient, just like your mind. A disobedient mind is the most dangerous thing that there is. And most of us have a very, very disobedient mind, myself included. I have had a very disobedient mind. But my mind's in training now. And you, need, you need to have your mind in training. So basically the mind is wild and free, infinitely wild and infinitely free. And it creates whatever it wants. Much of which, uh-oh, uh-oh, can you go get her? So there goes my mind, still needs some training. Oh, come back, come. Good, good. There's my little symbol from <laughs> my mind that's still in school, in obedience school. And, you know, the mind creates endlessly. And much of what it creates is based on other things that it creates. The original sin in that is it creates uh, the experience of a self, a small self, a person, and then it believes that that's what it is. And so it starts freaking out about survival and lack and competition and jealousy and, you know, all the crap that a small self has to worry about. But it's just the mind's creation. The mind thinks that it's, crea it's, it's creation. And so then it is creating from the viewpoint of the small self. So it starts creating all these people and experiences that reflect separateness, that it, it creates all of these, you know, phenomena on the screen of itself that reflect back, you're separate, you're not safe, you need to worry about survival, you're, you're aging, you're dying, you know, panic. And as long as it believes that it's the small self, it just keeps creating like that. And, and ultimately that results over, you know, arguably millennia in horrendous things tons of killing, war, rape, torture, theft, abuse, you name it, trauma, all kinds of stuff. Noisy, disobedient kids. And eventually though, it gets to be too much. It just hurts too much. And the mind starts seeking for a way out. It starts looking for any kind of solution. It tries drugs and alcohol. It gets addicted to sex and shopping and social media and, you know, vanity and material things and all the crap. It does therapy and it's just trying to find a way that it doesn't have to feel so shitty and, and like just deal with that ever looming feeling of death that's just hanging over it, the constant concern about getting stolen from or hurt or losing out, not being included, blah, 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 this shit. But the pain so much that eventually it begins to reveal to itself that it's not what it thinks it is. It starts to have experiences where it's like, wait a second, wait a second, I'm, I'm having an out of body experience. Wait a second, Haven, shush. I, I'm, you know, I'm uh, having a mystical experience. For some, a complete awakening. 
And upon awakening, realizing I'm not the mind, I'm the one who's aware of the mind. I reign supreme, and the mind is, is me, the mind is within me. And once that realization is had, then in comes the work of training the mind. Because just because you realize this doesn't mean you have a trained mind. You know, all of those deep, deep conditioned beliefs don't just go away. So any sort of insecurities or fears that you've had that stem throughout your entire life and arguably lifetimes, they're, they're infinite past lifetimes and they're all happening simultaneously. So we're dealing with, you know, the trauma and the insecurities and the fear and the thoughts of a lot, as well as the collective, because we're one with all of it. So we're dealing with everybody's trauma. And we have to begin training ourselves to training our mind, which thoughts we will feed and which ones we won't. And if you think about it, a disobedient dog does not listen to you when you say come. It does not listen to you when you say sit. Stop thinking, sit. It's like, fuck you, I'm gonna fucking think and run all over and take a piss on your foot while I'm at it. That's what a disobedient mind does. It was a disobedient dog too. But once you've trained your mind and you train it by not feeding your attention to any disobedient behavior, if it, you know, we're sitting here in the park and we had this like kind of maniac crackhead looking guy walk by and he's screaming and there's all these kids here and it's like, okay, why is the mind making that? Well, the reason the mind's making that is to make sure that we remember that there's pain and suffering in the picture, in the mind. You know, he's not real, I'm not real. No one's real, you know, a lot, there's been a lot of argument over like, you know, what to do with the homeless and the thing about it is what to do with the homeless is to have an awakening, to awaken and to heal within and then that ripples out and solves that problem. You don't manifest homelessness when you don't feel homeless on the inside, on some deep level. But anyway, I see that. And you know, if that person had been pleading for my help, I would help him because he is me. But I know that he's not real and I know that he's my mind. And in most cases, what I'm gonna do is not feed that. I'm not gonna give that my attention because I know that that's reflecting bad behavior. It's disobedient behavior on the part of the mind. It's like, I'm not interested in having that you know, in this scene right now. So I'm gonna focus on working with my dog <laughs> and, you know, watching the little kids over here kicking the soccer ball and hanging out with my missus. So that's how we train the mind, is we choose what to give our attention to. As the Supreme, we decide what we give attention to. And eventually the mind is like, well, geez, I keep serving up the crackhead, but he just doesn't give it any attention. So I guess I'm not gonna do that anymore. How about a lottery win? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll pay attention to that. Uh, you know, how about an ice cold Coca-Cola or if you don't do sugar, how about a, you know, a matcha or whatever. Like the things that we do want to pay attention to, that we do love, that we, we love our mind for making those things. And it's probably going to be a while before the mind stops creating a lot of the yucky stuff that it creates. So the training goes on, but it's up to us to do it. It's up to us to stop letting our dog jump all over people and bite people and chew up our furniture and, and you know, take the time to let it know how it gets to be and how it doesn't get to be. And if it starts serving up stuff we don't like, it doesn't get fed. We ignore that. And then when it serves up stuff that we do appreciate, we feed it. And so then it's like, oh, I see how this works. Before you know it, your mind comes and sits at your feet. Your mind rests, returns to the source stops thinking altogether and just, you know, allows its sort of natural essence to unfold whatever's happening. It's always creating. 
but it doesn't need to be thinking. So that's that. Be a good dog. Peace.